Significant figures tell us about the precision of a measurement instead of its magnitude. When you make a scientific measurement, you have to report your data using the correct number of significant figures, which gives an indication of how precise your measurement was. You can't write down some data that's more precise than the tools you use. And you can't go on to do calculations and then report an answer that's more precise than the data you started out with. That would be misleading. We'll start with some quick examples of significant figures and then explain the rules. 21. 21 has two sig figs. All non-zero numbers are significant. 2001. Four sig figs. All four of these digits are significant, including the zeros in between non-zero numbers. 2.1 times 10 to the third. Two sig figs. In scientific notation, the digits of the coefficient on the left are significant. Here's a piece of trivia. This part of the number is called the significand, and it's significant. 2.100 times 10 to the third. Four sig figs. Again, in scientific notation, all the digits of the coefficient on the left are significant. Where did these ideas of significance come from? From measurement. If you have a thermometer with each degree marked, you can easily read it to the nearest degree, but you can also estimate the next digit. We're estimating the temperature to the nearest tenth of a degree. Here it's between 37 and 38. It's closer to 37. I would read this as about 37.2 degrees Celsius. This estimated temperature has three digits. The first two digits are known with certainty, while the last digit has been estimated, and so it has some uncertainty. But all three digits are considered significant figures. The significant figures in a scientific measurement include all the digits that you know for certain, plus a last digit that is estimated. Similarly, when you weigh a sample on a balance capable of measuring to the nearest 0.01 grams, you can report the mass as 345.22 plus or minus 0.01 grams. The plus or minus notation expresses the uncertainty of the measurement. Now let's turn to the rules for significant figures, and we'll apply each one. Rule number one, non-zero digits are always significant. In the number 459,494,832, there are nine digits. All of them are non-zero, so according to rule one, all nine digits are significant. Rule number two, a zero is only significant if it is A, at the right end of a number and after a decimal place. 74.0 has three significant figures. B, between digits that are significant, according to rules 1 and 2. So, in the example above, 2001, the zeros in the middle of the number are significant. Zeros to the left of non-zero digits, or at the end of a quantity written as a whole number, are placeholders, and are not significant. For example, 0 0.128 has three significant figures. That first zero is just a placeholder. Let's see some more examples of Rule 2. 596,494,832.0 has 10 significant figures. If the number was 590,494,832, there are 9 significant figures. Same with 90,464,830.0. Remember, as long as the zero is between two significant figures, it counts as a significant figure. But in 0 0.04463, there are four significant figures. The zeros to the left of the non-zero digits are not significant. Rule three, if a quantity is known to be exact, it has an unlimited number of significant figures. If you count 12 eggs in that box of eggs you just bought, there is no uncertainty about this measurement. Counting individual items does not include an uncertain digit at the end. It's sort of like 12.00000000000 and will continue with an infinite number of zeros. This is important in calculations because these values will not limit the number of sig figs in your answer. Rule number four. 
When a number ends in zeros but contains no decimal point, the zeros may or may not be significant. This is so confusing, and it's a real problem when you're recording data. But this is a real benefit of writing data in scientific notation. If a quantity is written in scientific notation, all the digits of the coefficient are significant. You see, it can be argued that a number like 43000 may have 2, 3, 4, or 5 significant figures. It depends on how many of those zeros at the end were measured. If you're trying to say that you actually measured the whole 43000, you might try to denote it with a decimal place at the end, like this, 43000 point. Or sometimes you'll see people put a line above the digits that were actually measured. This is really hard to do if you're typing, however. There just isn't a real standard for indicating this kind of measurement ending in a zero. So the best solution is to just put your data in scientific notation. That way, if you want to show that you have two significant figures, you write it like this. 4.3 times 10 to the fourth. If you want to show you have three significant figures in your measurement, you write it like this, 4.30 times 10 to the fourth, and so on. 4.300 times 10 to the fourth has four sig figs. 4.3000 times 10 to the fourth has five sig figs. Let's next discuss how to deal with significant figures when you do calculations. At the very end of a calculation involving significant figures, you will round up to the final significant digit, only if the next digit is five or higher. So let's look at the rules for rounding after one, adding or subtracting, or two, multiplying or dividing. When you add or subtract, you round the result to the same number of decimal places as the measurement with the fewest decimal places. For example, 4.96 plus 1.3 equals 6.26, but you need to round to one decimal place, the same as in 1.3. So your answer is 6.3, rounding up because 6 is greater than or equal to 5. When you multiply or divide, you round the result to the same number of significant figures as the measurement with the fewest significant figures. For example, if you were asked to find the area of this rectangle, 2.1 meters times 2.336 meters equals 4.9056 meters squared. Rounded to two sig figs, because there are two sig figs in 2.1, you get 4.9 meters squared. This kind of raises the question, why are there more sig figs in one side of the rectangle than the other? It implies you used different kinds of measuring sticks to get that value, and these measuring sticks had different precision. Here's a special case that only applies when you do calculations with logs. In that case, the number of digits after the decimal point equals the number of sig figs in the original number. For example, 81.5 is a measured quantity. Then log of 81.5 equals 1.911, three sig figs after the decimal point. Here's another piece of trivia. The decimal part of a logarithm is called the mantissa. The digits in the mantissa are the only significant figures in a logarithm. The number in front of the decimal place indicates order of magnitude and is not significant. The opposite of taking the log of a number is to raise 10 to the power of that number. As you might expect, the sig fig rule for this function is the opposite of the sig fig rule for logs. The number of digits in the mantissa gives the number of significant figures in the resulting number. So let's do the opposite of our previous example. We'll raise 10 to the power of 1.911, and we should get 81.5 back. We get 81.470, and when we round to three sig figs, we get 81.5. I have a useful tip for doing multiple calculations. When a calculation involves two or more steps, and you're writing down answers to intermediate steps, Keep at least one additional digit past the number of sig figs. If you're using a calculator, this doesn't really matter, because then you just reuse your intermediate answers without rounding. But if you're working things out on paper, 
and writing down the rounded answers to the intermediate steps, this way you can still round off at the end to the right number of significant figures without losing any significant data. Did you know there are lots of ways you can help us continue our work here at Socratica? First, please watch our videos all the way to the end and hit like. Share our videos with your friends and on Twitter or Facebook or Google+, wherever you like to share things. If you're not subscribed, subscribe now. You'll be the first to hear about our newest videos. And finally, if you would like to support Socratica with money, well, you can do that on Patreon. Patreon lets you support your favorite channels for as little as $1 a month. Our patrons are such a huge help, I can't even begin to tell you. Uh, here's one more thing you can do. We're always looking for more topics to cover at Socratica, so please let us know in the comments which videos you would really like to see next. Thanks for watching Socratica.